Um, right, happy to announce that our next speaker is here. Um, our next speaker is Mira. Mira is our art psychotherapist. Uh, maybe let me do a quick introduction on her. So she is concurrently a senior art psychotherapist at um, IMH, where she provides art therapy to inpatients who are enrolled in the early psychosis intervention program. And she also conducts workshops for psychiatry residents. Mira guides her clients through a creative and transformative journey of art making as a form of psychotherapy where um, a, a person's unconscious core conflicts are identified and resolved through the use of visual imageries and symbols as well. So today Mira will be sharing with us more about art as therapy for our children. Right, let's welcome Mira. Good afternoon and warm welcome to today's session. My name is Mira and I'm really delighted and very grateful to be able to share what art therapy is and how we can facilitate creative self-expression for children through art. So there are five things on our agenda today. First, I will take you through a brief introduction on art therapy to provide you with an understanding of what art therapy is in an overarching sense before I talk about developmental art therapy, which is more specifically targeted for children. One of the main aims of today's sharing is to convey the significance of creative self-expression for a child and how art therapy could help a child to build a healthy sense of self while it is addressing and supporting many domains of development. I'm going to introduce expressive therapy continuum as a theoretical framework, which we could use as a tool to discern characteristics of children's art and the corresponding developmental stages. Then I will be sharing how you can create a culture at home for your child so that they can flourish with their creativity and creative self-expression. Lastly, I'm looking forward to our Q&A session. If you have any questions on the topic or the terms in today's session or on art therapy in general, please share with me and I will be more than happy to have in-depth and personalized talks with you. Just as a gentle reminder that you're more than welcome to take screenshots or pictures of the slides for your re reference and information. However, I will have to ask you to kindly refrain from taking photos of the slides that show children's artwork for the confidentiality. Also, when I'm referring to a child as a pronoun, I will use he or she interchangeably. I'm assuming that one of the main reasons that you might have signed up for my session today is to find out what art therapy is and how it might help your children and how it might be possibly different from art education or recreational arts and crafts. Without a further ado, let us jump right in. According to the British Association of Art Therapists, art therapy is a form of psychotherapy that uses art media as its primary mode of expression and communication. Within this context, art is not used as a diagnostic or recreational or educational tool, but as a medium to address psychotherapeutic and developmental needs, such as emotional, behavioral, or mental health issues, special needs, which include learning or physical disabilities, and neurological conditions or physical illnesses. Although now we are talking about art therapy in the context of how art therapy can help children, art therapy is not only for children, but also for all ages. To go a little deeper on how art therapy practice could be diversified, let me share with you that art therapy runs on a spectrum. On one end, art as therapy, on your left, is focused on the innate healing aspects of art making. In this context, 
Art can be used as therapy for creative engagement, relaxation, and pleasure, inducing the mindfulness and flow status, reducing stress, and bringing joy. On the other end, to your right, art psychotherapy has its roots in psychoanalysis. Images and symbols in artwork are considered as a window to one's unconscious. And it focuses on resolving emotional and psychological core conflicts, analyzing and reflecting on visual characteristics of one's art in a therapeutic relationship may enable a resolution and discovery of new insights. Developmental art therapy, which is the main topic of, of our session today, uh, falls on the spectrum rather closer to art as therapy as it focuses on the process of art making rather than on analyzing uh, the pictorial uh, traits. At this point, you might be also wondering how art therapy is different from art education. Art education and art therapy are not necessarily mutually exclusive. And the distinction between the two here is to accentuate what distinguishes art therapy from art education. And there are inevitable hand-holding educational elements, especially in developmental art therapy for young children. But the main purpose of art therapy is neither about the final product nor to teach skills and techniques. In art education, the emphasis is on the final product as, as it is geared toward producing a final product with a certain expectations for its finesse and aesthetic quality. Teaching of skills and techniques is important element in art education. Yeah. Artwork is intended for grading, as many of you might have experienced in your schools. It is also meant for sales, exhibitions, or personal satisfaction. There might not necessarily be an intentional application of psychological theories. Emphasis is on the personal satisfaction based on its aesthetic values. On the other hand, art therapy focuses on its process. Instead of focusing on the skills and techniques, it promotes free and spontaneous expression. Also, another critical point is that just like any therapeutic discussions that are meant to be considered confidential, artworks that are made during art therapy sessions is also treated with confidentiality. And it is not to be disclosed or exhibited without client's consent or therapeutic justifications. Our therapy process is clinically informed and influenced by psychological concepts to address unconscious minds as it is analytically oriented. This diagram shows the key components in art therapy. As you can see, the child is at the right uh, center of these dynamics. It is child-led and all the other elements are there to facilitate a therapeutic relationship where the child feels utmost safe and secure, be it art, space, material, and art therapies. We are to ensure that a space is conducive for a child to be able to engage in a creative expression without the fear of being judged or crit criticized. Developmental art therapy aims to support and honor the creative expression of a child as a foundation for a healthy sense of self by building an emotional safety and unconditional acceptance. But children in particular, non-verbal means of communications are a very important uh, part of any therapy because children do not always have the words to accurately convey feelings and experiences. Because thoughts and feelings are not strictly verbal and they are not limited to storage as verbal language in the brain, expressive modalities 
are particularly useful in helping them communicate their aspects of memories and stories. That those experiences might not be readily available through talks or conversations. All of the above that I have mentioned here so far is ultimately to cultivate healthy sense of self and a sense of agency in a child and to facilitate a holistic development of children. Developmental art therapy considers three main domains of children's development, social emotional, cognitive, and physical. Speaking of social emotional development, the right hemisphere of the brain is particularly active during early interactions between very young children and caregivers. And these early interventions or early interactions store the internal working model or attachment relationships and emotional regulation. Interactions between a baby and a caregiver are right brain mediated because during infancy, the right cortex is developing more quickly than the left. Just as the left hemisphere requires exposure to language to grow, the right hemisphere also requires emotional stimulation to develop properly. The output of the right brain is expressed in non-verbal ways, such as drawing a picture or using a visual language to describe the feelings and events. So for social emotional domain, our therapy sessions may help develop focus, motivation, and enjoyment of art making process, appreciate one's artwork to enhance self-esteem, conflict resolutions within a group, acknowledging friends' emotions, and also self-regulation and impulse control, expressing positive and negative emotions, and confidence and active participant in the art making choices. Art making in a safe and therapeutic relationship could also help reduce anxiety and reduce induce relaxations. Art therapists also choose art materials conscientiously to help the child discharge and metabolize his emotions or her emotions through art making. When being held with compassion and unconditional acceptance, the child may be more motivated to participate in a challenging tasks and it would enhance their focus and increase their attention span. And we encourage the child to make choices, be it media or colors, themes or topics, also sharing materials with each other or co-creating artwork. Children can learn social awareness, interpersonal skills, and conflict resolution. It helps to increase self-understanding, self-confidence, and motivation, and even concentration. And some cognitive goals during art therapy session will be planning and sequencing skills, flexibility and adaptability, manipulating tools, and problem solving. Inevitably, the process of art making children will encounter a lot of challenges and problems, but through the openness to creativity, they are able to tap onto their innate problem uh, solving very creatively. And for the physical domains, there will be a mastery of fine and even gross motor skills, and they will increase their spatial awareness. And working through a variety of art materials, that have different textures and fluidity, it will help them address their sensory, sensory needs. Oh, creative expression might mean a lot of things. So what is creative expression in the context of art therapy? It is self-expression of ideas, feelings, thoughts, personality through creative art. And why is creative expression important? Creative expression through art is the freest and most authentic form of self-expression. It allows a child 
to create their own language to express themselves. And it is very fulfilling for children to be able to express themselves openly without judgment. The impulse and ability to be creative and to create something from personal feelings and emotions can nurture a child's emotional and psychological health. Then, how can we recognize when a child is ready for a creative self-expression? It begins from birth, as we all know, but there might be more uh, concrete precursors that you might want to pay attention to. Your child might demonstrate curiosity for exploration and more courage to try something new with an increased level of focus and motivation. She will also start valuing and appreciating her art, presenting her ideas and themes. She will also show more adaptability as in challenging self to learn new things and broadening her knowledge. Clinical applications of art therapy is heavily informed by the latest research findings on attachment theories as well and the effect of sensory-based art making on developing secure attachment, affiliation with others, learning interpersonal and intrapersonal awareness, and empathy and self-regulation, and altering neural system involving um, the stress responses. And making art with a child can strengthen attachment relationships as it provides countless critical micro moments, such as tone of voice, postures, facial expressions, eye contact, and motions that you experience with your child during joint eye making sessions can provide him with clues to his psychobiology in identifying and formulating strategies for addressing disruptive, insecure, and disorganized attachment. It also helped him become more aware of sensations, emotions, images, and relationships. This slide um, summarizes the benefit of art making that I have illustrated and shared with you so far for creative self-expressions for your reference, which I wouldn't want to go over again, not to bore you. <laughs> Now, the question remains, then how can I facilitate an environment that is right for my child's creative expression? And how do we classify the children's preferred way of expression through their interactions with art media, art materials? One way to address those questions might be done through building an awareness on expressive therapies continuum, which I'm about to present and share. ETC, in short, helps us understand how we can organize children's interactions with art media into a developmental sequence of information processing and image formation from simple to complex. As the picture here shows, it is a bottom-up structure where it illustrates how children use rhythm and repetition at a very young age to express themselves, like mark-making and even mess-making. Then how they gradually move to a sensory awareness stage before they move on to the cognitive and more deliberate use of imagination in their art-making. If you could bear with me with this somewhat dry concept a little bit more. Um, expressive therapies continuum, as you can see here, is a framework to interpret a um, creative process that consists of three domains. At the bottom, the kinesthetic and symbolic. Next, perceptual and affective followed by cognitive and symbolic areas, which we on the top we have creative um, area. These domains may not be very discrete. They often overlap 
with each other and they are not necessarily linear. Let me take you through sensory and kinesthetic um, level. At a sensory kinesthetic level, information process processing is at a pre verbal level. It's happening before the child learns to speak and communicate in words. Rhythm, tactile, and sensual elements are very palpable in their artwork, and information is processed through their senses and we see feedback through their movements. Physically, they are manipulating and handle their materials to form internal images of them according to their senses and you know, the, the bodily reactions according to their hunger or anger, frustration, but they don't necessarily have the words to describe, but they have a connection with their body energy and they are able to project those energies into such um, scribbles and mark makings and mess making. So children's interests manifest uh, through scribbling, painting, mixing, and a lot of hands-on movements. Visual traits of their artwork reflect mostly mass, spontaneity, movement, and tracking. Materials that we use for sensory kinesthetic level include, but not limited to scribbling with whiteboard marker, chalk on a large board, erasing marks with fingers, even colored dyed rice at a tray, and kinetic sand, even wet paint, and painting even on a tray to give them a, some sense of boundary. Or we can also use ice blocks with food colors, large piece of paper, and making play dolls out of flour and playing with wet clay. And domains of development, as you can see, it's a lot about motor skills and they are learning. When I move my body, there is an effect and I see it through the marks that I'm making. So they will learn a lot of cause and effects. So these are some of the examples of how children um, engage themselves in sensory and uh, kinesthetic art making. As you can see, there are no deliberate or intentional uh, images that are being made. It's really reflecting the energy and sensory experiences in, in the process. And we are allowing in the session for children to go through with this process without stopping them or correcting them or you know uh, teaching them how to how to you know exercise the artistic skills and techniques. And this is another example which you can uh, appreciate. It's very calm and soothing. And the choices of colors are completely uh, made by children. Some are more visible with uh, their internal energy. They, they get exhilarated and get a lot of satisfaction through, you know, seeing their movements being projected on the paper. And it is, you know, permanent object. Instead of having their experiences of feelings and movements being very elusive and ephemeral, that it's remaining as a permanent object where both you and your child can Pay attention together as a joint attention and share the experience. Okay, this is another example: stamping and painting, printing, and the next um, uh, level in ETC is the visual perceptual or affective perceptual level. And information processing here may or may not need words and can be emotional and very raw as this overlapping with kinesthetic and sensory level and but it is expressed in more of as an image without concrete forms and it can be used to arrange formal elements on visual expressions and their interest um, is shifting from mess making and random mark making to constructing pasting piecing things together and forming and then the visual characteristics of their artwork show their intent and it is more targeted. There is a sense of orderliness and then there's a building and constructions and pasting, piecing together. So things that were very loose 
it's coming together. And materials that children prefer at this stage are sticking shapes uh, together on paper and drawing shapes and images on paper or board with markers or color pencils. Or they love stamping and painting images on paper and stencil paintings, building objects out of clay, paper mache. As you can see, uh, while you're using all this um, pasting, putting things together, a child is working on, uh, in a very natural uh, way on their fine motor skills and spatial skills. And they are also working on a sense of boundaries as well. So in the next few slides, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, the uh, effective visual and perceptual level of art. So this is the work that was done uh, through a cardboard. They, it was pre uh, cut, of course, the children at a very young age might not have a uh, skill to cut uh, small and very, very refined shapes out of cardboard. So there is a uh, provision of help as third hand and children do experience that there's assurance that if I cannot do and there is a help but again the self-directed nature of art therapy is a priority as you can see there is a lot of cutting pasting and forming and stamping printing and then there is also a uh, there are, uh, therapist engineered uh, uh, shapes and forms that are being introduced. So they will have a sense of my emotions and my expressions moving from a very open-ended, um, uh, random, spontaneous knocks. It is forming into something concrete. So they will relay these symbolic and metaphorical experiences with how they can understand and express their own emotions and feelings that might be also equally very abstract. Okay. This is another example. And you can see a feature of um, a child as a part of a self-portrait. Okay. And then again, it was about using the object to experience that, you know, I, I can project what I see in a concrete 3D images as well. So it's moving their uh, concepts about, you know, how abstract their uh, images in their minds can be concretized or projected into an object. And it's very satisfying and it will give them a lot of sense of achievement and uh, tangibility. It's another example of collage. I hope that you are enjoying the beauty of our children's so far. And we are very close to uh, the, the last uh, uh, portion of our, my pre presentation. So the next one is the cognitive symbolic stage. And at this level, children demonstrate more complex and sophisticated skills for planning, cognitive action, and intuitive recognition and verbal input is finally kicking in, uh, and it is often required to gather meaning about cognitive operations and symbols involved in the art-making process at this level. And children do show their interest in animating uh, objects created for imaginative play, painting images with details, and you know, they form the narratives and storylines. And the trait of their artwork shows their thinking and interpretation, narrative, and active imagination. And material-wise, for their imaginative play, they expand into using a variety of mixed media. And domains of their development is, of course, joint attention, and they plan, and they sequence the narratives that are uh, being formed in the process of their art making. So this, as you can see, there is a number of characters coming in and child is beginning to differentiate foreground as main subject and the background, what is above, what is underneath. So there, there is a sense of spatial awareness, which is aesthetically 
noteworthy, but at the same time, it is also relating to their position in the world where they are situated in their world, in their relationship with their parents, in, in the family and the schools. So this metaphorical projection of their spatial awareness in the drawings are reflection of their psychological awareness and understanding of where they stand as an agent in, in this world. And then the imaginative um, uh, artwork, and we give a partial uh, image of a cat, and then the child builds into something. So it's a formation of the active imagination, building a story, again, putting a subject of the drawing in the space. Okay, and then the next one will be this one. And then this is, as you can see, um, uh, multi-level right as you can see there was a work done previously and then the child cut out carving out and then it was pasted onto another piece of art so there is a layering there is a waiting there is a you know ca carving out a sense of self self-concept these are all the languages that are very um, latent and dormant and with the facilitation of art therapies child who might necessarily have a strong sense of self or uh, experiencing self low self-esteem might have this reassurance that you know I, I can carve out the shape of who I am and I can position myself in the space where I feel comfortable and safe and all this processing um, facilitated by a trained art therapist who can recognize the needs of a child and provide art materials and themes for the child to choose, of course, uh, by himself to be able to get the assertion of, you know, I, I'm okay, I, I, I am who I am, so acceptance of self. This is another imaginative um, drawing at the cognitive level. Here we are almost at the end of our sharing. Um, I would like to bring today's session to a closure by summarizing how we can instill a creative and safe environment for self-expression. First and foremost, it is about creating a culture that is accepting and respectful towards children's interests cultivate a sense of wonder and experimentation, give choices. And we are very easily tempted to give them directives and how it is to be done and how it is to be drawn and it should you know, be messy. But creating this space of non-criticism and non-judgment is fundamental in creating such um, creative culture. And with regards to art materials, support the child's interest and preferred way of expression, as we have explored in Expressive Therapy Continuum Framework, apply differentiated learning approach right, to suit the child's ability and emotional and psychological needs and the level. And social environment, encourage your child to respect the material and share with others. And Reinforce them to be aware of the emotions of yourself and the others. What is appropriate in social settings and negotiating social problems. And this playful therapeutic environment will provide you with ample, ample opportunities for you to firstly address your child's challenges or strengths in a very generative and constructive way. And most importantly, the take home point that I'm really hoping that you get out of my session today is that if you could enjoy, enjoy the shared experience of art making with your child, then everything that I have said above in length will be naturally, naturally reinforced. Okay, so with this, I will bring my session to a closure and leave the floor to a Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mira. I think it was really wonderful getting to look at 
all the different artworks um, can really feel like the emotion and the thought going into them. And hopefully the audience would have been able to get a sense of that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, if anyone has any queries for Mira, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Um, I think earlier on we had a question, which is that um, a lot of times people wonder, can you benefit from art therapy if you're not good at art? Like, you know, some of us can't even draw a stick figure that well. So if, um, if in cases like that, would art therapy still be for us? The more skilled you are, the more techniques you have in, in art, actually, it might not necessarily be beneficial, ironically, because it might come in the way to repress or even suppress the true emotions that need to come out. So the less uh, artistically skilled, the role, the more uh, direct expressions can come out of um, a person. And then it is the role of an art therapist to, again, facilitate that emotionally safe environment where the techniques and skills are not prioritized. And it is about trusting the process and you know, getting in touch with that um, core conflict through the process of art making. So yes, it's my reassurance that you don't have to be very good at art to be able to benefit from art. Thank you for answering the question. I think that's very reassuring to hear. Right. Um, does anyone have any more questions for Mira? Um, we were also wondering, um, art therapy uses different kinds of mediums. Do you have any particular medium that you think would be more beneficial or is it more up to the individual and what they gravitate towards? Like in a developmental art therapy, um, if anyone comes to an art therapy session, it is to exercise the sense of agency. Um, so mo most of the time, unless, unless there is a clinical justification as to this client might benefit from a particular media, then we, we provide a media that will address that emotional or psychological needs in specific, but usually it is, op it is open to uh, the choice of, of uh, the clients who comes into our therapy. Because the choice of art material is a reflection of um, the information processing as it was shared in expressive therapy continuum. And also, it also reflects uh, the defense mechanisms. For instance, if someone is highly anxious and uh, the person is in need of having to have controls in many things in the night. And I have noticed, and it's also um, studied and found that those highly anxious people will have a tendency to choose dry media, such as pencil, color pencils and markers, and even oil pastels. And in an extreme cases, they stick to a pencil, which can be erased which is a, a ramification of like, I, I need to control what I draw. If it doesn't go well in the way that I uh, intended, I'm gonna erase it. On the other hand, people with a lot of emotional um, energy, uh, be it frustration or anger, or even some in some cases trauma, they have a tendency to go towards um, wet media to really melt and release what's being really in the note of their psychic system. So we observe as therapists to see what is the inclination of a client naturally. But if we give them what we think it is the right for them on the onset or in the beginning, we are actually depriving them of coming up with their own um, predisposition or inclination on their preferences according to their psychological structure. Yes. Sometimes, yes, we have to, we have to uh, provide uh, a certain set of art materials that might benefit uh, the specific needs of a client, but mostly, mostly we will leave it open to the choice of uh, the client. I hope that I answer your question. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mira. Uh, that was very, very insightful. Yeah. Um, 
didn't know that there was so much sort of like theory and research done behind the different mediums. Yeah, it's very, very cool. All right. Um, I think that is about it. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Mira, for joining us today. All right, next up, we have uh, Dr. Annabelle from Annabelle Kids. Um, she will be joining us at um, she will be joining us at 3 p.m. So in a couple of minutes, where she'll be talking about how we can uh, manage our children's temper tantrums, which I'm sure a lot of us can relate. All right, uh, we'll be back soon. Uh, see you in a bit.